Krizowitz from Keeper for a Cure, and welcome to 10 Questions with the Pro. Today's guest is Lindsay Harris, who is a goalkeeper for the Houston Dash. Lindsay also play at the greatest college ever, the University of North Carolina. Lindsay broke the program record of saves in a season with 90 as a senior, making a career high of eight saves in an NCAA tournament quarterfinal match. Now that's impressive. <laughs> Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the show and being a part of 10 Questions with the Pro. How are you doing today? I'm good, Brady. How are you? Thanks for having me. This is so awesome what you're doing. I'm really happy I could be a part of it. So thanks for asking. I'm doing good, and thanks for coming on. Um, Lindsay, are you ready to get into the 10 questions I have for you? I'm ready. Let's get it. All right. Why did you become a goalie? Um, I think, uh, well, let's see. When I was younger, I actually played half and goal and half on the field. And the more I started going to keeper practices, I just realized that I love to fly around and be kind of that last line of defense. Um, I also don't like running fitness <laughs> uh, long distances, so that helped the decision. Um, but yeah, and I always played basketball, so I was, you know, I was wanted to play with my hands as well. So I think just being that, that last line of defense, you know, yeah, um, cause once the once the attacker beats all your defenders, you're the last hope. Yeah, and you can easily just become the hero of the game. So it's really exciting. yeah. Um, what motivates you to keep training hard to maintain being a professional goalie? Um, I think it's just realizing how much work I've put into it and everything that I've sacrificed. Um, and I just love this game so much, and I think I'm blessed to be able to have this kind of lifestyle. Um. And so I think what keeps me going is just realizing how much and how far, or how far I've come and realizing that I just really love this game. Yeah, because your teammates might think you just made an easy save, but it could be a hard save for you. And sometimes keepers don't get enough credit. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so much footwork that goes into it. You have to read um, everything that's going on. You have to get in the right position. Of course, if you put yourself in the right position to begin with it obviously looks a lot easier but there's a lot of small things that go into it yeah um what steps help you achieve the ability to become a professional level goalkeeper um i think definitely um working hard and sacrificing um everything and uh yeah just keeping your mind um confident you know what i mean Mm -hmm. You got to be confident or else you're going to be down on yourself all the time. Yeah, keepers, a, it's a thankless job. Mm -hmm. You really have to believe in yourself. Yeah, if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to be good on the field. <laughs> exactly. Um, What sacrifices did you make through your life to be able to become a professional level goalkeeper? Um, Obviously, I think uh, a lot of us can attest to this is – you know, you're gone a lot of weekends, your days are, your nights are busy with practice and stuff. So you miss a lot of social events, you miss, uh, miss yeah. a lot of school events, um, you know, a lot of like birthday parties, things like that. And there was a time I was going to 6 a.m. practices before school. Um, and then after school, you're still practicing. So it's really just sacrificing a lot of your time and a lot of maybe social events where you could be hanging out with friends and stuff. Um, but it was all worth it, definitely. Yeah, it one all that practice pays off, even if you don't always get to hang out with your friends or do stuff you want to. Hard work always pays off in the end. Definitely. Uh, if you were a professional goalie, what else would you have wanted to be? Um, well, sticking to the sports realm, I would have loved to play basketball uh, professionally. I played basketball all through high school, and it got to a point where I had to choose between basketball and soccer. And, um, so I love basketball. I would love to do that. Um, but also would love to be a hip hop dancer if that ever, you know, came in the cards, if I could start some choreography classes, stuff like that, that'd be fun. Um, and then if all that fails, I'll go back to school maybe for like engineering or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's a choice on my mind. I'm, I like to dance. Oh, there you go. We'll start a dance crew. Yeah. <laughs> um, what have you done on the field and off the field that you're most proud of? Um, I'd say on the field, actually, you said it earlier, I was going to say, um, was my 2016 senior season where 
I set the record at UNC for most saves. Um, and it's just cool because your name is forever in, um, you know, a record book there. And I just was very proud of that season as a whole. A lot of good things happened for me that season. So I'd say on the field, that's definitely one of my prouder moments. Um, off the field, um, I would say, so I was a math major in college and a physics minor. Um, so I think getting through school with those um, studies, I'm very proud of myself um, off the field for, for doing that um, and excelling in school as well, because being a student athlete is not easy. Um, so I'm just very happy I made it through that. I agree with you on the field because if you set a record, your name is always is forever going to be on a plat or a trophy. Mm-hmm. Um, what goalies or soccer players inspired you to be to be a professional? Hmm. Um, I'm not sure if there are many come to mind in terms of you know I idolized one person, but I know watching Tim Howard is was just a lot of fun. He's a great goalkeeper. It was a lot of fun um, to watch. And so I took a lot from him. And then also, I'm pretty sure when I was younger, I had a Mia Hamm jersey. Um, definitely remember that. So, um, My favorite goalkeeper is actually David De Gea. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, what are your favorite gloves to wear in net and why? Um, in the past, I have worn um, Roish. Um, they have this like uh, for really form fitting glove that I like a lot because it really just feels like you can feel the ball better. Um, but I've been kind of branching out recently um, for a few. But in the past, I liked Royce. Yeah, I've heard of them. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a save that you've made that really sticks out in your mind? Um, I would say it was 2016 season. Uh, We were in the NCAA um, tournament. It was the Elite Eight. We were at South Carolina, um, and it was 1-0. We were winning. A bunch of my family was in the stands, and um, they called a PK against us. Um, And I knew in the back of my head, I just, as soon as she walked up, I said, "I'm, I'm diving right. That's like, that's what I'm doing. I'm diving right. And she walked up, and she kicked it, and I dove right, and I saved it. And we ended up winning that game 1-0, and that sent us to the Final Four. Um, and honestly, that was one of my favorite saves. I will never forget. I can still picture it very vividly in my mind. Yeah, he just think, I'm going to die right. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I was like, well, that worked out. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give a young goalkeeper like me that wants to play at a professional level? Um, I would say, obviously, keep working hard, keep um, – training hard but don't you know don't burn yourself out don't overdo it like still branch out to other things like don't just get so focused in that you kind of lose your fun for it Um, yeah I think another thing for young goalkeepers especially is that um it's a very mental game or mental position and you're going to get scored on you know if you think about it the best goalkeepers in the world they all get scored on at some point so you just kind of have to have a short memory and just learn from that goal and move forward and don't dwell on it um, too much and don't get too down on yourself because everyone gets scored on. Yeah, everybody does get scored on. Um, mm-hmm. Now, do you have any questions for me? Yeah, why did you want to become a goalkeeper? I feel like 10 is pretty young to decide. Um, well, I actually decided to be a goalkeeper when I was six. Oh, wow. So I didn't really choose to be goalkeeper. I was just on the bench, and then my coach threw me in goal. <laughs> and you were like, yeah. hey, this is cool. Yeah, if I just told my coach I just want to play, and he said, all right, you can play, and then just put me in goal. <laughs> and then it just went from there? Yeah. Nice. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, What what made you start this Keeper for a Cure? Okay, so I started Keeper for a Cure when I went to a John Bush camp in Richmond, Virginia in 2019. When I was there, he told me that when we need to use the skills we learned to be leaders on the, on the field and off the field. So that night after the first day of camp, I went to my dad and said I wanted to do something to help other people. I wanted to do that something that helped with breast cancer because it had affected so many people in my family. 
I didn't want to affect anybody else. So I came up with the name Keeper for a Cure because keepers always have the backs of their team. So I wanted to have the backs of the people in need. Last year during our first ever fundraiser, we raised $1,300 for the Richmond Breast Cancer Foundation in Richmond, Virginia. This year, I wanted to do something local to my community, and after touring the Phillips Cancer Center in Charlottesville, Virginia, I decided to help them out by raising money for them. The money Keeper for a Cure raises will help women who don't have insurance or not great insurance, having screenings and other kinds of treatments at the center. So I started this show to help spread the word about Keeper for a Cure to get more exposure and help raise more money, but also to encourage other soccer goalies that we know what it's like to have uh, people's backs on the field and we should also have the backs of our community and those in need off the field. Wow, that's awesome, Brady. I'm like, that's so cool. Like that inspires me actually to get out and do more. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to like share this with everyone else as well, because this is awesome. Like I definitely, and I love how you brought in like how keepers always have people's backs. It's, yeah, that's really cool. That's awesome. Brady. Yeah, thanks. Um, Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on 10 Questions with a Pro. I really enjoyed chatting with you and I learned a lot about you. Thank you so much for coming on 10 Questions with the Pro and chatting with me. Remember to check out the show and all our other shows on our YouTube channel. This is also in a, in an, in a audio format on Spotify and also on iTunes podcast. You just have to search Keeper Freak here and remember to subscribe and like. Also, we recently updated our website. Please go to www.keeperforacure.com to learn about Keeper for a Cure and to find out how can you how can you can help. I'm Brady Krizowitz and my guest was Lindsay Harris. Thank you for tuning in to Ten Questions with the Pro.